All right, moving on. So I uh, got the prep work pretty much done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill a uh, quartz glass here with some clear green resin. So I've got some uh, resin in here, equal parts A and B. This is some of my wife's resin that she uses for her, some of her crafts. The slow curing resin takes about 24 hours for it to cure, which is perfect. So I just got, I've got it mixed in here. I haven't mixed it up yet. Gonna mix it up really well. And then I've got some dye here. Pistachio, which is green, so I'm gonna put one drop in. Let's see how green it makes it with one drop. We need a little more, do another drop. I'll do two drops. in there and I'm not sure if I'll get any bubbles or not <laughs> we'll see so I'm just gonna use the my stirring stick here I got some bubbles in it it's okay it's supposed to be a drink Gonna set this somewhere level to dry, cure. Got a little bit on the side here. Let's see if I can get it off. All right, there we go. I'm just going to set that to the side somewhere, let that cure for 24 hours. Right, like, actually, I'm going to put that somewhere else. I may need to get to that later. So I'm going to put this way up here on the shelf and just let that sit overnight. So that's done. Um, I need to work on Odo's sleeping chamber. So I'm gonna get the light scuffing with this uh, super fine sanding sponge. And then we're gonna go prime it before I glue it together. I'm gonna be able to get the inside and outside. And I already have washed this, but I like to give um, plastic a light scuffing just gives the primer something better to stick to. And then I'll wash it. I'll paint the inside and outside, then I'll glue it together, and then I'll look to see if I want to do what my friend suggested and fill it with clear resin. So uh, I'm going to prime this and come back. All right, so I went ahead and glued the bottom on this because I am going to um, paint this, and then I'm going to fill it with uh, kind of a gold colored resin because looking at some videos of Odo morphing he's like a look when he's liquid form he's kind of like golden tone so and the bucket is actually two tones the on the front of the box it just shows a one tone but it's kind of like a platinum and then this trim is um 
a different color. So I filled this, this seam with uh, super glue. I've hit it with some kicker. I'm gonna sand this smooth. And then um, it should be sealed so when I pour resin in here, it doesn't leak out. But right now I'm just sanding this seam with some 180 grit paper. smooth I wanted to do this before I was gonna prime it first thing glue together but I figured I should get I'm gonna do the resin trick thing I should get this bottom on and get it looking good before I do any painting And this smooth, get rid of the seam. It's a pretty decent seam. May have to do a little filling on it. Let's get most of it down. Okay, so that was. That was 180. Now I'm gonna go with some 240. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the um, the shine of the glue of the of the, of the seam. The sh if I can get this shine go. Uh, to go away, then I pretty much have taken care of the seam. But it may take a little application to the spot putty filler to really smooth it out. I went back to the 180 because I want to get this down further. So like right there, you can see that there's no, oops. Right there, you can see that I got that sanded out pretty much all the way. These uh, AMT Ertl kits, these old ones, the plastic is like really thick. I remember that when I was a kid, I used to, before I was like, knew what I was doing, I'd build models from AMT and Ertl and that plastic was just really thick and didn't hold details very well. You know, we're talking back in the 90s. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a thin coat of the Bondo spot glazing putty along this seam all the way around. Let it dry and then sand it down because I can still feel a lip there and I want that smooth. All right, okay, so I'm waiting for some stuff to dry. I figured I'd go ahead and like paint the phaser. Um, so I'm looking at the, the box art here. And uh, I thought about painting it like that, but then like, I'll go online and look at reference photos for Deep Space Nine phasers. Well, they're kind of all over the place. Um, there's rifles, there's hands, there's Star Trek Next Generation phaser, Starfleet Type 2. Um, does this give me a chart of what we look like? Let's see. I'm going to open up this file. This, looks like this gives me a... Um, a reference of this is on Pinterest. No, I don't want this deny. So let's see. Uh, Star Trek. Where's this? Deep Space Nine. Let's see. Number seven. Okay. So according to this, it's mostly silver with black accents, and the the art. And actually, the one that they have in the photo is not this one. It's actually like similar to this one, number six, which is the next generation phaser. So the one that they put in the box is really not even what they consider a Deep Space Nine phaser. It's more of a Star Trek Next Generation. The grips are all kind of <laughs> backwards. Um, like on, the grips are on the bottom on these. So 
I'm going to kind of use my own judgment and pick one that I like because what this is actually this is actually similar to what I have right here where the grips on top yeah this is what I have right here this is the exact same mold so it's a Starfleet type 2 phaser and it's silver with black accents and then there's like some green and orange buttons so that's pretty simple so I'm gonna paint the whole thing silver I've already primed it and we're just gonna hand paint it so for the silver part I'm gonna use this uh, Dur aluminum from Vallejo Metal Colors. It's been primed in gray. We're gonna hand paint this, this Dur aluminum, which looks just like what it does in the photo. So I'm not using the box art because the box art is wrong. And this front part is black, so I'm just going to hold it by that part while I paint the rest silver. Now, these metal colors are great because you kind of put them on, and the more you work the paint, the better it looks. It's the exact opposite of what you normally think about when you're painting metallics. Usually metallics, you just want to kind of put them on and leave them alone. These actually work better the more you work them. So when I put it on, I kind of brush and brush, 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 until the paint's just about dry. So it's kind of interesting because as you're painting, you're kind of buffing it at the same time. Like on the back here, I didn't have enough on there, so I'm just going to put it on there and just work it till it's about dry. It may even tell you to do this. You're basically kind of buffing the paint on. Getting all these freaking sales calls. So just about like that. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. And this one only has one grip. So then uh, what I, after this, I'm going to go in and paint the black bits, which are the grip this tip where I'm holding it in the background of these buttons. But see as it dries and you buff it, it looks really good. It's it's kind of cool how this paint works. I really like it. Normally you would not just sit here and keep working the paint. It is still tacky, so I don't want to handle the paint apart, which I just did. So just like that. So I'll let that dry and then I'm going to seal it with uh, a flat coat, uh, some Carlin flat, and then we'll go in and paint the little, pit, the little bits. Okay, so I painted that. I hit it with some uh, flat coat and it dried like to the perfect finish as far as what I'm looking at here on screen. Uh, I'm going to paint the little black areas now and I'm going to do that with um, probably, do I have any Vallejo black? I think it may be out. Let me see. Sorry, I'm in front of the camera again. Do, 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 do. Gray. I don't think so. So let me see if I can do this with some garage kits. Black. I'm real careful. All right, so I'm gonna use some garage kits that do this black here. Let's put that one back and let's get this little guy here. Oh, that one's actually trash because I forgot to wash it. Let's do this guy. All right, so we're going to paint the grip.
So this is garagekit.us paint. It's really thin, so I'm going to have to do two coats. And it's water-based, so it tends to want to beat up when I hand paint it. It does work better on a flat surface. So you can't do this on a glossy surface. It'd beat right up. So the picture I'm looking at is actually a, a, a uh, screen used prop. And it's funny because if you've ever looked, seen screen used props, they're not the prettiest thing to look at. They're usually pretty rough. And this photo is no different. You know, these things that they make for movies and TV, they're not designed for close scrutiny. So they don't have to be like Super detailed unless they do a close-up shot and then they'll make a hero prop in which they'll do that. Okay, so there's the grip. And I'm gonna hit this little the hair dryer here in a second just to, to dry it so I can handle it. end of the phaser black so this whole area goes black here on the box art they have the exact opposite this they have this going as silver but it's not it's supposed to be black So today's Tuesday, and I, I went and reworked one of Quark, uh, Quark, Quark's, Quark's arms again. I primed it and I thought I had it done. I wasn't happy with the, the transition. So I worked it again, so that's drying. Um, so I'm thinking that I can get, if I, if I, if I just kind of don't get disturbed, which is a trick around here sometimes. I think I can get Odo pretty much painted today and tonight. I've got two kids, a teenager and a 10 year old, and they always have something going on, whether it's soccer or dance or... And actually the only night of the week where we have nothing going on ever is Thursdays, but that, <laughs> that could change in any minute. All right, so now that phaser tip is black. I have to do a little touch up here where I kind of messed up, but that's no big deal. I'll touch it up with the Neural aluminum here a little bit. It's expected to have some touch ups. Okay, I'm gonna hit that with the hair dryer. I'm actually gonna put a little Neural aluminum here in my palette so I can have another brush going for our touch ups as I go. paint here on the edge and touch it up just like that okay it's looking pretty good Hair dryer is very handy when you're doing stuff like this and you want to keep moving. Paint a spot, hit with a hair dryer and move on. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to paint the background part, 
which is this little area right here where those three buttons are. That's supposed to be black. And then I'll paint over those buttons with silver again and then put a clear on them. I'll touch up the silver once I go and paint those buttons. A lot of back and forth when you're doing little stuff like this. Paint something, you gotta touch it up. kind of messed up a little bit. It's all right. I'm going to touch all that and make it pretty. All right, let me check out the hair dryer. I'm going to touch up the silver again. I'm gonna go and touch up these little areas I messed up. Check everything. Check my edges. I'm gonna touch up this a little bit. Right there. I'm gonna hit the grip one more time. Looks like some of the paint settled into the cracks. This grip is not uh, molded very well in this piece. You're not gonna see a whole lot of it anyway. It's in his hand, so. These three buttons that are here on top of this black area, I'm going to hit that with a little bit of the silver. And then I'm going to go seal it. And then I'll put a, though this button's supposed to be silver right here, so I'll just hit the top of that. And leave it. These two are supposed to go orange, so we're going to hit these with silver. So, we go seal this. I'll put some clear on them. Okay, for the clear colors, uh, I got some over here for the green. I've got uh, Badger Ghost Tint Green. Go figure. 
and I'm just gonna put that right on top of this button here. Kind of dabbing it on to, to build it up. For the yellowish orange, I'm going to use ghost tint orange. Makes sense. I'm do the same thing. Okay. Build it up. Actually, I can do a little more on the screen here. And then once he's dry, I'll put a little uh, acrylic gloss on just to give him a little bit of a sheen along with the front part of the phaser. It won't be super glossy, but it'll be a little shinier than the rest of it. Okay, so there's the green button. Again, just kind of dabbing it on. Just build it up a little bit at a time. I'm not sure you can see that, but now we've got two kind of yellowish orange buttons, which pretty much match what I'm looking at. Clear. You gotta put it. You gotta build it up a little bit of time. It's pretty thin paint. All right, that looks good. Green. I can go around. Green button. I can go around the edge here a little bit more. Do is I'm going to take some uh, glossy varnish, just Vallejo gloss, and I'm going to put that on top of the buttons and the front part of the phaser. So it's 
this black part. I'm going to put a coat of that on. Now, acrylic gloss never dries like glass finish gloss. You're not going to get it. It dries too fast. So it doesn't level out, but it does give you a nice kind of semi-gloss look, which will be perfect for this. Okay. There's that. And I'm going to put a little bit on top of the buttons here. That'll just help protect them and give them a little shine. I'm going to do this one here too, center. Now I'm just dabbing because I don't want to reactivate the clear paint. So if I, if I just dab it, it won't reactivate, it won't come off. So there we go. So now that phaser is painted. Looks pretty good. So if that's decided to dry, I'll put that up here by the Quark's glass. Now these brushes. I think my putties here is dry. Let's see if it's dry enough to sand. I'm gonna start off with the 240. Set for a little while, set for at least an hour. This is an air dry putty, so that's why you have to wait forever. So the thicker you put it on, the longer it takes to dry. I'm going to hit with 240, and then I'm going to hit with some 600, and then we'll throw some primer on it and see how we look. got the bases uh, primed also. I just um, I gave them a good bath and I came up once over with uh, an ultra fine sanding sponge, which is like a thousand grit. I did that with some soapy water, which just kind of scuffed up the plastic a little bit, gave it a little bit of tooth and I hit it with some black primer. Those are drying. And I think for forks base, I'm just gonna do a little bit of dry brushing on it to bring out the Deep Space Nine etching on it. And then for um, Odo's, I may do something to it, I don't know. It's, um, it's got some different panels on it, so I may pick those out and do some dry brushing on it just to give it, so it's a more interesting than just black or just one color. Okay, that's coming pretty good. I'm just very lightly sanding, so I'm probably putting any pressure on the sandpaper. Let the sandpaper do the work. Looks smooth. Never know to put primer on. Come around this way, I got a little putty lip unfortunately. Just gonna clean out the tip of an exacto. 
that's that's all sanding and stuff. Sanding debris. So every time I like sand a part like this, I always go give it a a bath. I'll go hit with this toothbrush and some soapy water. It just gets any fingerprints off, any dust. So I do a lot of washing of parts in between steps. Once I get to the painting phase, not so much, but it's all actually never once I get to the painting phase. But until I get to the painting phase, there's a lot of washing parts. It's just a good practice to do. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna go give this a bath and then I'm gonna throw some gray primer on it and then we'll look at painting it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is after I primed it, I still saw the seam line there, so I went around with Sharpie, and I'm using this as a guide, a sanding guide, and basically I sand until the black line is gone, and hopefully that means the seam is gone. And basically, it's called a guide coat. Um, I used to paint cars full time, a long time ago. After you got done priming a car, you would lay down a mist coat of what they call a guide coat. Basically, it's flat black spray paint and you would, that would be your guide to know when everything was sanded smooth. You would sand until all the black is gone. That's what I'm doing here. So this is 240 right here. And then I'll hit it with 600 again and then prime it again and see how we look. All right, so I got the bucket primed. Got the seam line taken care of. I think it looks really good. So uh, now let's paint the first color. So it's a two-tone. On the box art, it shows it as one color, but we're gonna do it according to what's on the show. So if I look at this, it's kind of a warm, almost a brass with a copper. So that's what we're gonna go for. Um, if I look at this photo here, where he's holding it with the planter, um, this is uh, probably the best photo right here, but it's kind of a warm silver, almost brass with copper trim. So that's what we're going to go for. So for that, I'm going to kind of mix up my own color. Hopefully these airbrushes are in spraying water. <laughs> probably not. I need to clean all my airbrushes. They are in sad shape right now. I get this one spraying, we'll base coat it, and then I'll have to wait till tomorrow because I want to mask off um, the other color. So let's see if we can get some, an airbrush working here. I'll come back when I'm ready to spray. All right, okay, so I'm mixing up my custom color here. I'm using basically uh, Vallejo liquid, uh, they're liquid metals. Uh, this is liquid silver and liquid gold. And I'm kind of doing an even amount and I'm kind of getting this color, which if I look at the screen grab, to my eye it looks pretty damn close. So we're gonna go with that, okay? And then I'll seal it, let it dry overnight, and then I'll mask off the other areas and do um, the trim. So, Let's see if I got enough, hopefully I got enough uh, mixed up here. We're gonna spray the inside and the outside of this. This covers really well, so I should have enough. Of course, I'm just put it down where all my dust is, and I gotta brush off the dust. Get some static electricity here. I had a paper towel inside and all the lint came off of it. So I'm gonna paint the inside first.
airbrush. My airbrushes are so dirty right now. I haven't cleaned them. I usually clean them after a major project. I haven't done that in a couple projects. some time cleaning your brushes tonight. That one was spraying a little log so I put paint in it. thing to spray and this is what we're looking like I think it's the perfect color so I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit I'm gonna seal it probably with a satin spray instead of flat and let it dry overnight then we'll mask off uh, all this trim and paint that like a, a copper color and then that'll be Odo's bucket and then uh, can look at now I have seen scenes where he's holding he's got this as a planter that that could be cool too so maybe I could ask my client if he wants me to put resin in it or if he wants to use it as a planter so uh, Next steps will be to, after I seal it, we'll mask it and uh, spray the cover, but that's going to be either later tonight, if I wait long enough, or tomorrow. All right, so I'm starting to spray some skin tones on Odo. So I went over them with first a, a coat of buckskin tan, which is here, and then I went over with some bronze flesh. He's looking pretty pale right now. I actually like um, what they did on the box art. Uh, if you look at screen captures of him, he looks like plastic, like there's no shading or anything, but we're not gonna go that way because it looks really flat. So I'm gonna, um, I'm out of my light African flesh, which is like my go-to kind of skin tone. So I'm gonna take some of the semi-transparent medium African flesh skin tone and mix it. Um, with, I think, the buckskin tan. Cause that should give me a nice um, base coat to work with. If I can get the paint to come out. Oh, not a fan of Jesse's bottles. They clog up so bad. Let me get a... Real quick. It came out just a second ago. Come on. Love Jesse's paints, not a fan of the bottles. Okay, so I got some. much paint but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on so this is a semi-transparent medium African flesh and some buckskin tan I'm just gonna miss it on this will get me actually really close to what they did on the box art but we're gonna do this, we're gonna seal it. I'm gonna go with some pastels and do a little bit of shading. And the box art, they have this hair is brown, and it's not actually brown, it's um, kind of a, it's almost metallic, but it's like a silvery gold. 
Okay, so that's a, actually a pretty good starting point for the skin tone right there. Do the hands. And then we'll go seal these, and then we'll break out the pastels and do some shading. I just cleaned this airbrush and it's already spitting. good so I'm going to pour out this uh, paint into a little dropper bottle and keep it as a kind of a custom mix I bought a bunch of these dropper bottles off of Amazon so right here I'm just going to I'm gonna actually mix up a little bit more so I don't waste the bottle and then I'll come back. All right, for pastels, I use the pan pastels. I use these all the time. I'm gonna do a little burnt sienna, a little raw umber, which has got a little green in it. Uh, since he's kind of an alien dude anyway. And then, uh, actually we'll start with the, the uh, raw umber. See how this does. So I get some on my brush. And I go into the shadow areas. Just dab it on. And get another kind of bigger soft brush and blend it in. So dab and blend. That's actually kind of getting me where I want to go. Um, burnt sienna a little bit. Actually, I think what I'm going to do, because I don't want to go, I don't want him to turn orange. He's not orange, he's very flesh looking. Come in here with the, um, uh, what is this? Ah, I can't read it. Burnt sienna tint. So I like to bring it up pretty contrasty and then go in and mist in kind of like a base color of paint to tie it all together.
I like doing most of my shading with pastels. I just have, feel like I have more control over where I get my highlights, put my highlights and stuff. Lots of dabbing, just kind of dabbing and blending. the shading like super super punchy because um, like I said in the any all the screen grabs I've looked he's pretty flat I mean he looks like plastic <laughs> but we do want to give him some shape taking a little bit of the raw umber and doing the nail beds dance between the pastels and the paint and just kind of going back and forth. Kind of take some of it off on my hand here, so not so much. actually looking really good. It's right about where I want it. I come in here with the shadow color and do a little bit and then come back and blend it in. Looks pretty good. I'll do the other one. Same thing, we're going here and kind of hit the deep shadows with this raw umber. It's gonna look a little weird at first, but it's okay, we're gonna blend it all in.
so that my base skin tone I have sprayed is actually really close to where I need to be. So I'll try to preserve that. Normally I'd go and seal the that first pastel and then blend it in, but I kind of like how that was blending on that first hand, so we're just going to keep doing that. This hand, the features are a little softer for some reason, I don't know why. Make sure I got the right hand, not, not a, a quark's hand. They're they're kind of they're very similar. Quarks are a little stubbier. back in with this bigger brush that's got a little bit of the shadow color on it and kind of blend it back up into it like that. Softens up the transitions. Probably missed on just a very, very thin layer of the base coat on top of this. So get that two hands together. Oops. Let's see how they're looking. Yeah, those look pretty good. Okay, let's work on the head. I'm gonna have to go here in a second and pick up my son, but we can get a start on it. Alright, again, we're gonna go in here with the shadow color. And underneath the eyes.
the chin. Nine ears, pretty hard. too hard I'll to come back and work on it. Hairline. <sighs> now in the box art they have his lips as kind of like a purplish brown. I don't see that in the in the screen grabs. Again, it looks a little funky at first until you go in there and start blending this all together. The temples. Hairline. Inside the ears. This brush off pretty good because I want to use this big brush mostly for the for the head or for the face. So here you can really tell we bring the contrast up pretty high and then we'll go back in and blend it in a little bit of our base coat. This is where you can really define the, the, the sculpt. Do you mind getting it for me? Project has showed up. Getting boxes every day now from people. Is it a box? Little package? Yeah. Sweet. I think the Hellboy part came in. Yay! That's good. I can finish that up tonight. Okay. So just in this neck, high spots. 
Again, it's just a lot of dabbing of, this, of the pastels. Get soft transitions. Gotta go pick up my son, and then we'll come back and finish this up. Okay, so I went and got done with the doing that pastel work, and I just sealed the hands and the arms, and I hit them with a hair dryer. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more of this um, custom mix I made of Odo's skin, and I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit with uh, some pale flesh. I don't want to cover up what I did, but I just want to kind of shift this a little bit so I'm back way off. The hands are actually right where I want them, so I'm just going to leave them. That looks perfect. Do the same thing on this hand, just a very, very light dusting. Very subtle shading. It's probably won't even show up in camera, but it's there. You can kind of see it there. Looks really good. And then the head's got a little more punch to it. It's right here. So again, I'm going to back way off. Again, just very, very subtle shading on these pieces. He's a little on the green side, so I'm going to dump this paint back into my little custom bottle here. I'm going to do a little shifting of tone. Transparent pale flesh. I gotta put it into my airbrush right here. I'm gonna get back way off. to go there and just more pastel work. I'm seeing a little a little messy. Let's see. The transparent color, but it, it shifts the color pretty quick. This one backed off so far. Well, it's just about got me where I want to be, I think.
Let's look at this compared to the hands. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think the hands are right where I want them. I don't think I want to do anything else to them. I may just ever so slightly get a little bit of transparent flesh on them. the head to really see what I got here but I think I'm pretty close I'm, I'm actually using the the uh, box art kind of as a guide I think what I need to go and do is come in here with my my base tone So I've got the base color in here. I'm going to go in here and just real lightly kind of hit. I'm not digging it. I think what I need, I know what I need to do. I'm just gonna miss this over here. I'm fighting it. My pastel work was a little messy and I'm not liking it. So I'm just gonna kind of mist over a little bit. on the base color I had going on before. And I'm gonna go and do some shading with the airbrush, which I usually don't do, but the features of this guy is pretty soft, so I can do it. Okay. I'm gonna come in with, the, with my transparent African flesh. shadows. Okay, so this is semi-transparent African flesh. Which is the shadow color of my base, of my base tone, so I can hit the shadows with this. And then missed on the um, the base color, and I should get what I want. Cooperate. Just 
and dry tip. So just back off and hit these shadow areas pretty light. Usually I don't have to do this, usually my pastels work out pretty well, but I don't know. I still been digging it. So we start over. dry tip. I just wish it would spray. Okay, so there you can see the shading we got going on. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of this. Put on I think I want to it's just on the kind of color I came up with. Okay, so that looks much better. Now I'm gonna go back in with the semi or the transparent pale flesh and warm it up a little bit. Some more fleshy tone in there.
I think we're there. So if I look at a photo of him on the screen, I think I'm pretty close to where I gotta be. Uh, do, 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 do. So depending on the photo, he looks really pink, which I don't like. I could add some pink to him if I wanted to. Maybe a little more of this transparent pale flesh. And then maybe just a hint of transparent bright flesh. So this is bright flesh. You gotta be real careful with bright flesh. way off and just really lightly missing the zone. Okay, I think I really like that. I think so. I'm going to see if I can come back. Okay, so I seal it. I think he's just maybe just a hair on the dark side. So I just got some pale flesh in here. Regular pale flesh. I'm gonna brighten him up a little bit. The shading is there. Everything's there. It's just a hair on the dark side. in with a little of the transparent bright flesh. A little pink to them. But now we're gonna leave them because I really like this. really good I think so so we're gonna seal that and then we'll work on his hair all right so I got the skin toes looking pretty good I'm happy with how they look so now we gotta do the hair now again I tell you what the reference photos for this show suck because <laughs> the you know it was done in the 90s so the technology wasn't as good so it's really hard to find good photos this is kind of the photo I've been using as a go by so his hair is kind of um, it's kind of goldish um, so I don't want to do metallic. I think that looks dumb. So we're going to kind of do some, uh, we're going to base coat it in uh, heavy brown. And then we'll do some, uh, see how it looks. And then we'll do some dry brushing on that. But this is about as dark as I want it to be. So again, this is a uh, Vallejo. Heavy brown. Yeah, we're just gonna go in here. This has been sealed. I really need to get a. My hands are full of paint and stuff because when I get in go mode, I don't put gloves on because I'm just my brain is working a thousand miles a minute. I'm like okay, this next to this next this next, and I just don't put gloves on. My hands get really disgustingly dirty, full of paint. So put a glove on. All right, so we're, I'm, I'm not gonna videotape this whole process because it's pretty boring, but pretty simple. You just go in here and base coat the hair. I 
and it's a pretty hard hairline, so I can kind of come in here and just outline it. And the box art, box art has it really dark, which is not. All right, so I'm gonna go do this and come back. Okay, so I base coated the hair and then I sealed everything and then I decided to go ahead and do the eyes. I didn't do that on camera because I had to get real close to my Optivisor, but I base coated them in white, painted them blue, and then did that and then lined them. So now, and I also sprayed the flat coat on a little heavier, so now his skin's got a light sheen to it. Um, so now the next step is, this has been dried for a few hours, so it's, I can handle it no problem. Uh, now we're gonna dry, uh, dry brush his hair a little bit um, to bring out some of the tone, and for that, I'm gonna use a little bit uh, what do I want to use? Because it's kind of like this. Did I download the photo? I thought I did. I've been downloading photos of Odo <laughs> all day. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so his hair is kind of. It's not silver. It's kind of. I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's almost gold, but I don't want to do gold. I don't want to do like a. And I don't want to do yellow. So I think I may just use this heavy brown and add a little bit of heavy golden brown to it. And go from there. So now I need a flat brush. The eyes took a while there. Actually sculpted very nicely, uh, sculpted very nicely. So it's just a little, a lot of back and forth, back and forth until I got the, um, Got everything clean the way I want it. Let me get a, a, a stiff brush here. So I thought I'd be able to get Odo all painted tonight, but I had a little family thing I had to take care of. So unfortunately, I think I'm just gonna get the skin tones down, which is, it's okay. So I'm just gonna mix up that heavy brown, a little bit of this golden brown as a highlight color. So it's not quite yellow. Again, they have the his hair on the, on the on the box art is black. It's not black. So I'm gonna dry brush this. I'm gonna get most of the paint off my brush here. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. There's not a much detail sculpted into his hair, but we can try to bring some of it out. Use a flat part of the brush. Okay, this is a little too yellow, so I may just go back on top of this. Actually, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in with this yellow, since I got it here. <laughs> and then I'm gonna mix a little, um, kind of off-white into all this. So maybe a little, little too yellow at first, but we're gonna tone it down. I really like his skin. It looks really good. Skin tones I have to paint and then come back and look at them a couple hours or like the next day because 
never sure if I like them until like the next day, but they turned out really nice after all the shading and everything. After the airbrushing and stuff, it looks really good. Okay, so I got this kind of yellow highlight going on, which I'm not a fan of because it's really not like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of this uh, fairy flesh into my, I like this fairy flesh, it's a great color. I use it for just about, <laughs> I use it on all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that into my, oops, maybe a lot, I don't want that much. Uh, there, that's the color I need. So I mix the fairy flesh in with the heavy brown and the uh, heavy golden brown. And I'm looking at my reference on the screen here on my phone, and it's just about the color that I need. Need a little more of the, just a little bit, don't want too much. Right there. So this on top of the yellow I just put on, I think will do the hair just right. And if that's the case, then this portrait is done. Again, just real light, just using the flat part of the brush. it right there my clients enjoying the work in progress video so yay <laughs> he's watching them <laughs> gets a kick out of it so I like it that when uh, my clients watch the videos a lot, a lot of guys don't want they don't watch it they don't watch the videos <laughs> probably because they're too damn long and they don't want to sit there for three hours and listen to me ramble but if you guys appreciate it and uh, watch the videos, and I, and I appreciate it because um, it does slow my it does slow the process down to sit here and even though my videos aren't the greatest, um, I try to show you what I'm doing as best I can. But that's it right there. I mean, that's pretty close to what I'm seeing on the screen. This might be a little brighter than what's on there, but. It's definitely not black like they have on the box art. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna seal that. And I think his portrait is done. And then the hands, um, now on the box art they have his fingernails painted white. Um, again, I'm looking at photos online of his fingernails and they're not white. Um, they're just, <laughs> that cup had some thinner, the pen, the cup uh, they're just like normal fingernails. So I am just gonna put a little bit of pink on them to give him some differentiate, to give him some, um, just to change him up a little bit. And for that, um, I think I'm just gonna use a little buckskin tan, which was one of the colors I had in the uh, base, the base coat, the base color. And you can see my hands all jacked up because what I do is I put paint on my, and mini uh, miniature painters do this and then they wipe the, excess paint off on their hand. So I'm just gonna put some buckskin tan on there, on his fingernails just to, they're definitely not white. It's like that, and just gives them a little separation from the, from the hands. I can't even see me doing this in camera because they're so small. If 
But I think what I'll do tonight as one more thing is I'll try to get the first color on the on his uniform maybe. That way they can dry overnight. So I'll have to do some masking. There's so a little Q-tip, or not Q-tip, a uh, toothpick, whatever this thing is called. And that's my little scrubber that I use to clean up mess ups. It's perfect for it. So I just put a little saliva on it, and wherever I got a little overpaint, just kind of rub it off. That's why it's really important to seal all your steps because if you don't, you can't do that. You'll take the paint off in the previous step. Fingernails aren't sculpted the best because they're really small detail, but you paint them to make them look good. There's that hand. So that'll get sealed when that hand is done. This fingernail really isn't sculpted in at all, but we're just going to kind of draw a fingernail on there. Same with this finger. These fingernails on this hand aren't very good. I'm actually surprised at how much detail they can get in one of these vinyl kits. Pretty impressive. So Odo's skin is done. Yay! Actually a pretty big step. Okay. So we're gonna go seal all this for the final time. And then we'll work on spraying. So this is out his elf is two-tone. He's got brown boots. So probably the best thing to do is to do the uh, dark tone first down the middle here. Um, this color. And actually the color they have on the box art is very close to what his out outfit actually is, so I'll probably paint it close to this. So uh, we'll do that when we come back. Okay, so I take it back. The box art doesn't look anything like what his actual outfit is. 
it's actually kind of this mustard brown color. Um, so if you look at what they did on the box, the box art, they did a brown, and it's actually kind of this, this, I don't know, this is like a mustard yellow, his sleeves, and this is a little more, the, the center part of the box art is pretty close, but that's it. But that's the part we want to do first, because it's easier to spray the center part and then mask that off, because then this piping and everything goes to the lighter color. So here he is, all prepped. Looks pretty good, I think. Yeah. I'm just doing one more once over, because I, 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 I did find a couple more little pinholes and everything, so. I mean, you, you could spend countless hours just going over everything, um, which I've, I've done a lot already, but. Um, oh, I know why, because they're thinner. These cuts are melting because they're thinner on the, workbench and these are not thinner proof okay so for that color I'm, I think I might have a the perfect color for that um, let's see what I got here Where no that's metallic give me a second no, I thought I had one what was it is this it no this ah, this might be it No, that might be good for the sleeves. Okay, let me see what I got. I gotta see what I got for his center portion. This cocoa bean might be a good color. So let me mix some of this up. Let's see how that goes. Again, this is just, just the craft paint. This might be a good color to start with, and then uh, shade from there. Water, 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 water. Where's my water? There it is, water. And then my paint mixer. My work area is a complete wreck again. I'm gonna mix this down here because it might splatter. <laughs> Yeah, this might be a good starting point and then after I shade it I'll dry down just to where it needs to be. So we're going to put this down as a base coat. Airbrush a little bit from the last color. Yeah, let's see if we get this to spray. Right, here we go. So again, this is this is the the center portion of his outfit. And the boots are a little bit darker. Um, I'll look at those online also, but I think they're gonna be a little bit darker. Okay, just gotta put this on light. So this is spraying much better than the red I did on the Hellboy craft paint. I think probably because again, red, red paint and any type of paint just has like no pigment. It's like, it does not cover very well. Any kind of paint, red does not cover well. So this isn't the right color yet because it's still really light and it's transparent. You can see through it. The 
funny thing is, is that this primer that I use is yeah, it's not quite the right color. I was gonna say it's almost the right color for the light portion of the outfit, but it's not. Building it up slowly, just you can't hose it on. It's going to be the right color, but we're going to put it down anyway. I thought it might dry down to the right color, but maybe it will. We'll see. We'll see. Looks like I'm putting a lot of paint on that. Slowly building it up. Can hit this with a hair dryer. It'll dry pretty quick. It's really thin. Let me do that real quick. See where we're at. I can't heat it up too much because this is vinyl. I don't want to soften it up, even though I've got it filled pretty much up to his armpits. Not quite opaque yet. I can see some discrepancies in the, in the color. what you get this stuff thinned right i don't know if i can shade with this with this craft paint because it doesn't atomize like a hobby paint does but it goes down really smooth i think it's going down like butter
that with the hair dryer again, just real light. this under lip here because that's got to get all right so i'm gonna keep doing this until i'm happy with this coat and i'll come back okay so i got that done I'm going in here with some of this garage kit that US Mahogany. This is actually the color I think I need. And I've got to thin down here and I'm just doing my shading. And I'll just do a little bit of this on camera because I need to really kind of concentrate on this. Like right there, I just got a boo boo. I did not seal this first, which I probably should have. all the shadows and I'm going to go in and mist it over everything. I'm just not going to spray. I need to lower my air pressure I think. paint just dry tips like crazy almost instantly dry tips and I've got retarder in there big shots are easy I can come back and I can Open up the airbrush a little bit. You can kind of see there's that color I'm getting. my airbrush. Don't know why. This is the color I need, it's looking good. If my if it would just spray the way I want it to, that'd be that'd be awesome. It's actually almost there. Again, just real soft shading, nothing too dramatic. No, it just spit up on everything, damn it. All right, let's see if I can blend that in. I think I can, yeah. Luckily, it happened in the shadow. All right, so I'm gonna mess with this, and then when I'm happy with it, I'll come back. 
Okay, we're getting pretty close. So I've mixed in a little transparent black with the mahogany. I'm gonna hit the shadows again, and then I'm gonna mist on the mahogany over the whole thing. My battery's about to die here, so hopefully I can show a little bit of this. Real light with this. I'm just about there. I just want to deepen the shadows a little bit and then blend it all together. back off. just about spot on to what I'm looking at on screen here. It's got a little bit of red in it. So I think it's pretty good. So I'm gonna seal this and then call it a day on him. Is I gotta let that dry really well overnight. I'm gonna mask off uh, the center part tomorrow and then do the other part of the suit. So uh, we'll take a look at that tomorrow. All right, so next day. Uh, sprayed this yesterday, let it dry. Now we are going to, I'm gonna check one more time to make sure the color is where I want it, I think it is. I'm gonna check my reference one more time before I start going to the next color. I gotta get to my photos I've downloaded somewhere. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Um, again, depending on which photo I look at online, sometimes it goes a little green, sometimes it goes a little gold, so I'm gonna go with this color. Sometimes I just gotta use your artistic license um, on some of the stuff. I'm gonna do it. So if I do a search on his costume, this is what I come up with, and I'm pretty damn close. This may have a little more red in it, but it's okay. So um, I'm happy with that. 
<laughs> uh, my wife just sent me a photo. Okay, so now we're gonna mask off and we're gonna do, and now it looks like his shoes are about the same color, but I'll do those later because in the order of masking, um, for ease of masking, we're gonna do those last. Um, here's the base, it's been primed in a flat black. I got a little scuff mark from just having them on the surface here. From, um, I actually kind of like just the black, um, but I may go in and maybe paint these panels down here and then maybe do some dry brushing just so it's not flat black. But I do like the plain black. Okay, so for, first thing we gotta do is we have to make sure that our paint is sticking <laughs> to the surface. So I'm, I always do this, I do a paint test or a tape test before I go masking a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna throw some tape on here and I'm gonna rip it off. And my primer sticking really good. And it should, because I've washed the, the parts numerous times. It's been primed very good numerous times. But I always like to do this before I commit to masking off an area because nothing's worse than masking something off and then go and take your paint up, tape up later and you're getting peeling. Now, that doesn't mean <laughs> that I won't get peeling, but this just kind of reassures me that the chances of peeling are slim. I'd rather have it now done now before I get the other areas painted. I have to redo two areas. Okay, so that's looking good. So I've got this, um, this is called washi tape. I'm gonna put this in my lap and work on it in my lap because it's just easier. probably notice I'm wearing the same pants in all these videos. That's my PJs. I hardly get dressed these days because I never go any. It's like, it's like I get dressed to pick, you know, I get dressed like late in the evening when I take the kids to soccer practice. But during the day, working from home, painting full time right now, it's like I hardly ever get dressed. It's quite sad. Uh, okay, so this is called washi tape. It's very similar to Tamiya tape. It's not quite as sticky but it's a lot cheaper so i got some really thin stuff here that i'm hoping i can go in and mask these curves pretty easily now i may have to i do have some other tape actually i do have some constructing tape from tamiya that will go around a curve a little bit easier. So let me try that. Out. This is to me a tape. This is like a vinyl tape. It's got a little stretch to it. You don't want to stretch it too much because then it doesn't stick. I thought I had a thinner version of this too. The thinner the tape, the easier it curves. You gotta pull it just a little bit, but you don't, if you pull too much, um, it won't stick. There'll be too much tension on it. So there's one curve right there. Okay, I know I'm off camera because I'm, I've got them standing up now in front of me. And what I do is I get to a spot and I kind of lock it down. Just a little bit, not a lot. So this is the reason why I did that dark part first because this piping goes the color of the lighter part of the suit. And it would have been really hard to mask over that piping 
than rather than masking up to it, if that makes sense. Okay. And then we'll do. Okay, so I'm going to break the tape here. I'm getting too much tension in that curve right there, so I break the tape and I'm going to start a new piece where I can make that curve a little bit easier. And I might have some slight brush touch ups to do along the edge at the end. It's no big deal. So the thinner the tape, the easier it is to make a curve. Mm -hmm. Tape is a little thick to be making these tighter curves, but. Looks pretty good, okay. So now what I like to do is like to get a toothpick. And I, I bite the tip of the toothpick off. I don't want a sharp. I don't want a sharp edge. And I just go in here and I push against this edge and I just seal it down. And I'll be doing. I do this a lot. The, the, uh, right around the edge. I'll go right before I start to spray paint. I'll do this. And while I'm spraying paint, I'll do it because you don't want the lifting of, of the edges. If there's not enough, if there's not too much tension on the tape, it shouldn't lift. Okay, so we got that down. Now I can go in and start to fill in the large areas with this tape. And I go around the edges first and that just also helps lock that edge tape down. Smaller pieces are better because you can get them to go. See, I overlapped that white tape a little bit. I don't want to do that. I actually need to order some more of this tape. I think I'm getting low. people don't like masking I actually really enjoy it <laughs> I find it very kind of therapeutic um, yeah I I don't know it's when I used to paint cars um, I worked in a body shop full-time for a long time and then I worked I worked in a couple other small other shops part-time and they always gave me the masking because I was the best at it <laughs> I was the I was the best at masking in the shop um, because when you do a car, there are certain things you have to do to make sure that, you know, you don't get, you don't create little pockets and stuff and to gather dust. So I, I just have to be, happen to be really good at it. And probably because I, I just enjoyed doing it. A lot of guys hate it. I don't know. It can be very time consuming. Sometimes you'll spend hours masking something for literally a few seconds of painting time. And I think that's why some guys don't like it because you spend so you can spend a ton of time doing it, and then you literally spray paint for a minute, ten seconds, and you're like, "That's it. I spent all the time masking, and that's and only sprayed paint for ten seconds." So, like right here, I'm gonna make this curve, and then I'm gonna break the tape there. And I got a little too close to the edge there. I'm gonna go ahead and. Seal that edge. <clears throat> the hardest part on masking this part will be the, the little edge underneath the waist. And I'll show you that. I'll show you why here in a second. 
don't think it'd be too hard on this, but typically when you're painting, you don't have to do any masking. You start from the lowest point and work your way up on the piece. You always have to look at what needs to be masked and what what makes sense. You always want to you always want to try to mask where your tape is butting up against something, not wrapping around something because there's too much tension on the tape and not enough surface area for it to stick if you're wrapping around something. And I'll show you that here in a second. But if you're butting up against an edge like here, this piping, it's much easier for the tape to get the tape to do what you want in that scenario. That makes sense. Okay, that looks good. Another important thing is when you're doing all your prep work is that if you do it correctly, if your prep work is really good, I should be able to put this tape on here and leave it on as long as I, pretty much as long as I want without having any negative results after I take the tape up. Sometimes, but not, not necessarily with figures, but when I do Gundams, I'll tape something and it'll stay masked for, it could be days, it could be weeks, depending on how many levels of masking I have to do on a piece. So that's why I'm really parent, I'm really, really thorough when I'm cleaning pieces and doing all that prep work, constantly washing pieces during the prep stage. It's really important that your surface is clean. Yeah, make sure your painted heating is good. Okay. So that area is mess. So now the hard part is this little lip right here. So this is why I have to wrap tape around. And it's just the way this is sculpted. So in the perfect world, I could have painted the pants and then masked the pants off. But again, I'd rather have to deal with that little area. So in that case, what I'm going to do, I don't think this is, this is the solution, this tape here. It's not wide enough. I don't think it's going to wrap around the way I want. Let me see. Okay, yeah, there's not enough surface area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some thin piece of tape. I'm going to lay it kind of in that crease. I'm going to leave it really loose. And I'm going to get my toothpick. I'm going to so the tape is loose, so I don't want it tight yet. Because I want it to conform that to that shape. I'm just going to let it do its thing. So as I push it down, the tape just kind of does its own thing. And you don't want to pull on it because the tension will get, will, won't allow the tape to stick because there's not enough surface area. So we do that. So this is like a tedious part right here. And I'm going to put down a big piece of tape to kind of just Lock it down, and then we're just going to go around the waist doing this. Put a piece down, leave it loose. And then take your toothpick or stick, whatever. I like a, a toothpick with the, the tip bitten off. If it's a sharp point, then it's going to pierce the tape, and you don't want that. When I do quark, I won't show masking because it'll be in this part of the video. It'll be the same process, just on a different figure. So when masking is something like this, the important part is to make sure you have a really good seal in the corner and on that little lip right there. Because the 
tape doesn't have a whole, have a whole lot of surface area. And uh, you don't want to use a thick piece of tape there because it wouldn't conform to the shape of the waist. You need it to have, you need to be able to kind of curve around that area. So once we're done with this, we're going to take a razor blade with a brand new blade on it and cut it. It's not the most exciting thing to watch, but a lot of guys are intimidated by masking, so like I said, I enjoy the process. So this washi tape I got off of Amazon, and I think I got like, um, I found it based on another YouTube video from a, I forgot the guy's name, I can't give him credit because I forgot his name, but um, he found it based on a YouTube video, <laughs> so the power of YouTube, um, and he, this guy does a bunch of testing and stuff, so he tested it out and it's not quite as sticky as Tamiya tape, so you, 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 this stuff you really can't leave on extended period of time because it will lift after a while. But okay, this tape may be a little too thin for this spot. So I'm just kind of breaking it off as I get around this corner. Exposure is a little bright with the darkness. I process this video, but it's okay. okay. The boots will probably end up hand painting. Dang it. that didn't want to come off the dispenser and it messed up. Okay, almost there. You can see just to mask this area is about 20 minutes. So it's, it's time consuming. It takes, and this is a simple area. This isn't even hard. <laughs> I always get it, like, why didn't you use Silly Putty there? Because Silly Putty, um, I, I like it for certain things. This I would not use it on because mm -hmm. I would never get a hard edge like I do here. I would have so much touch up along the edge with a brush. And since I have so many different clear layers of paint on here, I would never really get it to match very well. Um, also, Silly Putty uh, is affected by gravity. Um, it wants, it tends to move a lot, so um, yeah. If I I'll use it for quick things, but I would never use it on something like this. I know guys that all they use is silly putty, and it's like it's great for them, but I'm, I just I uh, I rather use tape. So I'll get a hard edge, um, and quite frankly, this would actually this is actually quicker for me than using silly putty because I'd be fighting the silly putty wanting to move. I couldn't I couldn't hold the piece by this. If I had silly putty in here, I wouldn't be able to hold it like this because my fingers would cause the silly putty to move. And then I'd be like trying to fight the silly putty moving and coming away from the edge. All right, so now I'm getting a brand new blade. You want a, you want a brand new razor blade when you cut tape because you don't want to put any pressure on the tape. You want the blade to do all the work. This is a brand new blade. And when I'm doing a, a long masking session, I'll go through a lot of blades because as soon as I feel like the blade's not cutting, I replace it. 
And we're just gonna go right in the groove there where we had our, and not putting hardly any pressure on the blade. As soon as you start to push on the blade, it's gonna slip. And then you'll be sorry because you'll either cut the paint that you've already put down, or you'll put a big old cut in the area that you want to paint and you gotta fix it. And believe me, I know I've done it. It's not fun. So again, just following that edge where we sealed it with the toothpick. Letting the blade do the work. You'll know you need a new blade because I can feel it cutting through the tape. And as soon as you need a new, need a new blade, it'll, instead of cutting the tape, it'll start pulling it. And sometimes it doesn't last very long. Tweezers out. That's not a good pair of tweezers. That's a good pair of tweezers. And if we did it right, tape should come right up. Like that. That's how you mask. <laughs> so 25 minutes later, it's masked and I'm ready to spray the next color. So let me get set up for that and we'll come back. Okay, so I've got a custom mix of Deco Art uh, Cocoa Bean with some caramel and I've got one drop of green in there and I'm slowly building it up. This is the craft paints. Now, when I'm spraying along the, the tape line, I don't put it on too wet because since this is a water-based paint, um, if you put it on too wet, it could creep underneath the tape because this is a paper tape. So just put it on kind of dry the first go around just to kind of seal that edge and then let it dry. And then when you go back, you can later put it on a little wetter around the tape. I've already kind of done the top part here. You can see it's drying. Um, I'm not sure if this is the, the final color, but um, as it's drying down, it's looking pretty good. It may be a little, I thought it'd be lighter than this. Uh, I knew it was going to dry down, but um, I need to compensate for my shading. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all base coated, and then when that's done, I'll come back. Okay, so we got them um, base coated. I went ahead and sealed it with some Krylon. Uh, I'm going to put a glove on so I can handle this guy a little better. Now, it's a little bright than, brighter than I need, but I planned on that because I needed shade it and take it down a little bit so i and i the suit has a little bit of green in it just it's ever so slight so what i'm going to do is hopefully this will work uh, i've got some transparent smoke from garage kits us here and i think this might be the right color to do the shading with so we're gonna give it a shot see what happens if not we start over <laughs> so um, and I got a little bit of retarder in here. Oops, crap. So I'm gonna just test it out here, like on the back here where I got some tape. 
Okay, we're gonna see what happens here. This could be amazing, this could suck. We'll find out. There's transparent smoke is. It's got a little bit of green in it. It might be just the right amount. So now hitting hit, hit all these creases first. Real light. It's not where I need to be. I can see what I'm doing. So I'm putting on super, super thin. So this will go a long way very quickly. Sometimes I spray on a part that I'm not painting on just to make sure paint's coming out. <laughs> Because it's coming out that thin, I can't. Sometimes I can't tell. You probably can't tell either. And the camera's focusing on the background anyway. Yeah, you can see a little bit there. The piece there. This will be very similar to what I did yesterday. Just the overspray from hitting the shadows will darken the whole thing down a little bit. Continue doing this and we'll come back. 
Okay, so I've done my shading and I'm really close to what I want to get. So uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do what I did last, like I did yesterday. I'm going to back off and I'm kind of going to mist this on everything. I'm going to bring it all down a little bit. Very lightly. I'm just going to shift the color a little bit. And I am looking at my phone and what I've got here is pretty much spot on. So, I think once I miss this on, we'll give it one more once over, see if I need to accentuate any more of the shadows. I think they're looking pretty good, pretty natural. I will say one thing, even though I spent countless hours <laughs> Um, doing prep work on this, it's kind of like this vinyl is the uh, the surface still isn't perfect. I mean, it's just it looks good, but it's not 100% uh, perfect. None of my work is perfect. I always say that it's never perfect. So I'm gonna get this knocked down. I need to go in and hit some of these shadows a little bit more, I'm noticing. For the most part, I'm there. Yeah, that transparent smoke had just enough, just a touch of green in it. When added to the um, that kind of mustard color I put down, got the tone pretty much spot on to what I'm seeing on, on the screen here. I'll probably just keep mine a little lighter, not quite as dark. It'll be a nice contrast with the, um, the color we did yesterday. So I'm gonna continue doing this and once I'm satisfied, I'll seal it and then we'll take tape off. Got a little steel here in my palette. I'm gonna get a brush. Now I'm just gonna kind of bring out some of these details. I should say space station.
pretty good. And I'm just going to keep it simple. Now it kind of looks like some metal plating or something. Kind of buff a few areas. And if I want to, I can add a little bit of dirt aluminum to that to bring up one more level of highlight. I just add a little dirt aluminum to the steel. Subtle, but it's there. Pretty good. So let's unmask it. Got this nice clean black edge around this with a little bit of weathering on the center part. And just makes it a little more interesting. Just like that. So I'll seal that and the face is done. And now for uh, quartz base. <laughs> I can get it over here. Ah, it's got this nice relief of D DS9, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off this lip on the inside and the outside, and then we'll um, dry brush the center part. I'm not going to show that on camera because it's just going to Basically, I'm going to mask this outside edge. And then that inner lip. And I'll dry brush the center. And we'll get that nice relief. Again, just to keep it simple. Side lip. This will be a little trickier. I can't show it on camera. Hmm, that didn't stick at all. This tape is not sticking in there at all. I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, interesting. I'm not sure there's dust on here or what. Let's try a different color. Yeah, this must be dust on here or something. It's not wanting to stick. So I'll have to figure that out later. But I will do that and dry brush the center and then it'll look cool. Okay, so Odo for the most part is done. Uh, I did decide I'm gonna try to fill his little sleeping chamber with resin. So I've got resin in here and I added some bronze dye because um, when he morphs, he kind of turns into like a gold liquid. 
So this is gonna do one of two things. This is gonna look really cool when it dries, or it's gonna warm up and melt the plastic. <laughs> I don't know. So um, we'll see. Hopefully this turns out cool. Gotta mix this up really well. And I just gotta make sure I try not to get any resin on the side of the cup. I fill it up like maybe halfway, three quarters. I'll see. I, I, I mix up enough resin to fill this up quite a bit. But my main concern is that it's going to warm up and do something to the plastic. I don't know. It's a slow curing resin, so just gonna make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Just put the last little bit of sealer on Odo. I'm gonna glue his hands on, I'm gonna glue his head on in the morning. Okay, that's probably pretty good. All right, let's see what we can do here. Hopefully this will fill about halfway. All right, perfect. All right, so I'm not gonna to touch it now. So in about 12 hours, I should cure it pretty good. It takes about 24 hours to fully cure, but in 12 hours, it should be stable. So, um, tomorrow we'll work on quark. Okay, so I poured that resin yesterday into Odo's bucket and it cured fine. It didn't hurt the plastic, but it did bubble up around the edges a little bit. And just because I poured so much, so I mixed up another small little batch right here. And uh, I didn't put quite as much of the dye in there. And it's gonna pour a little thin layer on top of that <clears throat> to help cover that up. Because uh, it's just as it cured, you know, the heats up and so as the heat and the gases try to escape it bubbles up a little bit It's the first time I've ever poured resin like this is slow curing stuff um, Probably should have done it in a couple layers would have uh, solved that problem, but I just wanted to see what would happen Luckily it didn't warp the plastic or melt it or anything So I got some here. I didn't put quite as much of the dye in here, so it might kind of give it a cool effect um, a little more translucent look to it. Let's see. Let's mix it up real well. I'm just going to do a real thin layer and this will dry by tomorrow. Move it around. Just so it kind of covers up that edge a little bit. And then tomorrow it is what it is. So we're just gonna let that sit again overnight and hopefully there's no bubbles. But other than that, it looks cool. I'm gonna put on some gloves because I just handled that resin. My hands are a little sticky and I wanted to show you Odo because he's, uh, I gotta do one more thing on him and then he's done. I just gotta put some gloss on his eyes. mess. Of 
push everything out of the way. <laughs> but, uh, so here's Odo. And he looks like I got one tiny little brush touch up there, uh, which should be pretty easy to do. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, really happy with the colors. I think it's pretty accurate to everything I saw reference wise. So the only thing I gotta do is put a little gloss in his eyes and he's done. And I just use uh, some acrylic gloss. This is just MIG ammo. Use Vallejo, whatever. And it's gonna be pretty simple. Get a little tiny brush and just a drop. And just a little light touch with the brush. And this stuff goes on a little cloudy, but it dries clear. Okay, there's that. And then from a little brush touch up, I'm just gonna use, um, oh, where is it? I'm gonna put it in my lap so I don't come down in all this mess. Where is it? Here we go. Should be able to part, touch up a little bit of this, just a little dab of this mahogany. cleaning brushes at some point. I'm off camera because I just need to see what I'm doing. When you do a brush touch up like this, you don't want to you don't want to paint. Like you don't want to do brush strokes, you want to dab. Like that. And then I'll hit that with a, a little bit of sealer. And it should blend in pretty good. Luckily it's in the shadow area, so I can put this on pretty uh, just straight. <clears throat> and there you go. It's pretty good. So I think I may do one more thing later. Uh, he's a little shiny, so I may, um, I probably should have done this before I did the eyes. I may hit it with uh, um, some all clad semi matte or flat, just to knock the shine down a little bit. But other than that, he looks really good. I'm happy with him. So now we're gonna move on to Quark. Uh, and I'm gonna clean up and uh, we'll get moving on him. <laughs> 